you know, it's not lost on me what I'm missing by not being there. <clears throat> I hope you'll forgive me for putting myself first in the situation. And so in order to make up for it, I'd like to tell you a story. Now it's a football story. And as such, it would be appropriate for a football reunion. This is a story about a kid that didn't have a clue. Now, there's a saying in Wyoming and I'm sure other places that you can't run with the big dogs if you pee like a puppy. And if anybody was peeing like a puppy when they got to the University of Wyoming, that was me. And so I'd like to tell you a story about how this kid grew up in one football game in the season prior to the Sugar Bowl. Now, don't get me wrong, the Sugar Bowl was an awesome experience. But this is about one of the games leading up to that. And it's a game where a kid grew up. Now, you all know what a stellar student I was in high school. You know, I was, um, I'm sure Mr. Shropshire would elevate me to a, uh, an example of something. Uh, we'll let that go. I'm sure that it was all Colleen's fault, but, uh, you know, I can't really place the blame somewhere else. So, and when I got to Wyoming, I don't think I was any more of a student or did I have more of a clue than I had in high school? Uh, probably not. So I'd like to tell you about one football game that gave me a lesson that I'll never forget. And, uh, you know, the lesson has stuck with me throughout my whole life. My freshman year was average. And when I got to my sophomore year, I got to be a starting lineman for the University of Wyoming football team. Now, still didn't have a clue, but I thought I was pretty hot. And not having a clue leads a person into uh, a few wrong turns, uh, you could call it, okay. Now, this is about one game in the season leading up to the Sugar Bowl. Now, Jake, if you're watching, uh, this is about Arizona State, so it might have some meaning for you. So we were going, uh, we were the away team, and we were going into the uh, stadium, Sun Devil Stadium. And that's a beautiful stadium, you know, uh, quality, uh, quality uh, situation. And we got into the visitor's locker room. And we noticed that it was a nice big room, beautifully done, but we looked around and all the toilets were along one wall and no stalls. There were no stalls to be found. And we looked at that and it created a little bit of a, uh, let's say a little bit of a, uh, consternation for a lot of us because our routine to get ready for a football game included the use of the facilities. Now, we all went and found other facilities that had stalls, so we all made it through that uh, mishap, I would say. Uh, they said they were remodeling the uh, away football, the uh, visiting football uh, locker room, uh, I don't believe it. I think they did that to, to unnerve us, and it did a few of us. So as a sophomore and a person not having a clue, I let it bother me. But that wasn't really the story here. Um, as we're getting ready for the game, and, you know, we go through our, our normal routines, uh, there was a center coach, one of the, oh, let me tell you, that the coaches in their wisdom 
decided that I needed to be a center. Now, coaches make mistakes. I'll tell you more about that in a little bit. As I was getting ready, our center coach, uh, he was a fifth year uh, lineman and uh, walked up to me and Mal and I didn't get along because we were, we butted heads a lot during practice. And, and uh, he walked up to me and handed me a brochure. And he looked at me and said, this is your guy today. Good luck. I didn't think much of it until I got the brochure in my hand. And this is what I saw. This is Curly Cole. 6'2", 260 pounds. And I made the mistake of reading the brochure because it was all about him. He was the NCAA heavyweight champion wrestler and he pinned his opponent in 51 seconds. They described him as having muscles on top of muscles. Wow. Okay, so I'm gonna get killed. I knew that from the very beginning. And I thought this guy, if they are gonna make a brochure about him, he's gotta be pretty good. Well, you know, I looked at that and I thought, well, wait a minute, I'm 6'3", he's 6'2", I've got a bit of an advantage here. Oh, mister didn't have a clue, didn't have a clue. And so we went about our, our normal routines and we got ready for the game. And I was out there doing long snaps and snaps to the quarterback. And let me tell you that getting used to what the quarterback is doing back there is a huge thing for a young guy who probably hasn't been touched by a woman or a man. So we got through that. I was doing all the right things, snapping the ball good, doing the long snaps, and we get to the game itself. And we get out there. It's our first set of downs on offense. Now I'm out there and my thinking coming up to this point was, okay, this guy's gonna kill me, but I can make it tough for him. I'm gonna fire out and give him everything I've got on the very first play and it'll make him think about what he's doing. Or he might think for a second before he really does me in. And so I knew I had a challenge in front of me, and I thought the only way I could do that was give it everything, just go for the gusto. So we get into our first set of downs. It's my first chance to snap the ball in a college football game. I hadn't started in any game before this. And this is where the coach's wisdom comes into question. So we get down there. I'm down in my stance. I've got the ball in my hands. And when the cadence came right, I fired out with everything that I had. I took it to him. And it was like hitting a brick wall. I mean, I hit him, but I'm not sure he even noticed. And so when I got myself up off the ground, I turned around and I looked, and there's the quarterback on the ground and he's covering the football. There are two jobs of a center. The first job, well, not the first job, one job is your blocking assignment. And the second job is to get the ball to the quarterback. Well, I think I failed on both of those. So, okay, uh, I won't say no harm, no foul because we didn't make any yardage. In fact, we lost a couple. So we get back in there, we get in the huddle, next play is called, and sure enough, I've got a block, Curly Cole. And so I get up there, and this time I said to myself, and, and this is in a split second, I said to myself, I gotta fire out on this guy again. I mean, he whooped me last time, I gotta let him know that I'm not gonna give up. So I fired out, and I, I hit him as hard as I could, and 
And I felt pretty good about myself until I got up off the ground, turned around, and there's a quarterback on top of the ball laying on the ground. Well, again, I forgot to hike the ball. I'm not sure what I did with it. I think I threw it in a random direction, but I fired out and I didn't I did what I thought I was supposed to do. Oh, Mr. didn't have a clue. So now we get to the third down, and I thought. The only job I have at this point is to get the ball to the quarterback. And and that was what I was going to do. In spite of whatever other job I had to do, the, the quarterback was going to get the ball. Well, he got the ball, and Curly Culp, Curly Culp took me to the cleaners. I mean, he he I remember going backwards and hitting the ground on my back and I think he just walked over me. I don't remember anything after that. Well, I got the ball to the quarterback, and we we made some yardage. I mean, Jim Kick was a good a good uh, running back, so he got something, but didn't get enough for the first down. Or, and so here we are, we're at fourth down. And so the coaches coaches make mistakes, and. In their wisdom, they decided I needed to be a long snap, long snap center. And so I get out there and I'm still on the field. I'm not, I'm not dead yet. So I figure, well, maybe I've done something. So I, uh, I get down and I'm ready to hike the ball to our All-American kicker, Jerry DePoister. And what I do is I hike the ball and I raise my head up to hit Mr. Curly Cole. Well, what happens when you long snap a football, you have to keep your head down until you release the ball. If you don't do that, you don't know where the ball goes. And sure enough, the ball went over the kicker's head and there was our All-American uh, kicker. He had to run back and jump on the ball and they took over on downs. So. Sure enough, out of four downs, I'd failed four different times. Well, maybe three and a half. But so I didn't play any of that game after that. Jay Shapiro went in, and I'm going to give that gentleman more credit than I've given anybody else because I watched him snap the ball, keep his head down, and almost beat the ball to the kicker. He would come flying out of the line and Curly just let him have it. And I give him credit for doing that over and over again. So what did Mr. Not Have a Clue learn from all of this? What I learned was what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. I didn't learn it that day. I didn't learn it the next game because I didn't play the next game. but. The coaches gave me my vindication that two games following that game, and I went on to play in the Sugar Bowl. Uh, I was going to quit football after that Arizona State game because I was so humiliated. I thought there's no reason to do this anymore. And the coaches, in their wisdom and insight, figured out that I needed something, and they gave it to me. And I went on to play in the Sugar Bowl. And Al, I love you like a brother. And I'll never forget anything you've taught me, ever. And coaches are the best thing that ever happened to a player. So you guys have fun. Sorry I'm not there. Enjoy your time.